Welcome to part 84 of the video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to quickly render out a movie file from your animation that you've made in Blender. In this video, I'm going to be using a file that I created way back in part 17 of this video series, in which I talked about how to render out a movie file. And so if you want to go ahead and download this exact file, it's on my screen right now, you can find a link to download that in the description area below this video on YouTube. The reason why I'm making this new video is because Blender has changed a bunch of the ways or many of the settings and what they look like of the export or the output area under the camera render tab in the properties window in Blender. Of course, if you like this video, if you know something, go ahead and click on that like button below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Blender and in Tech, click on that subscribe button as well. So things have changed in this new version of Blender, Blender 2.79. So if you're using that new version and you want to export a video file, this is the quick video for you. Of course, in this whole Blender 2.7 video series, on many occasions we've talked about uh, creating animation or movement in Blender. We've talked about simple animation that was in part 14 of this video tutorial series. We've also talked about simulating uh, different things like dominoes and waving flags and cloth simulation. We've talked about adding post video effects. We've talked about character animation, including character dialogue to recorded audio. We've talked about character walking animation. We've talked about creating fire simulation and snow falling using particles and character uh, walk cycles and even creating a Star Wars uh, opening title crawl. So in the last part of all of those videos, the last step would be to export a movie file from Blender to your computer. So we'll be talking about movie files today and Blender's new settings. If you've gone ahead and downloaded this file or you have your own animation file, where we're going to go now is over to the camera tab and if we scroll down from the top or from where it says render animation and audio down to the section called output, this is where things have changed. Of course, you can always output to a sequence or a single still image. So there are lots of still image formats. The most common, of course, being JPEG. And JPEG images are great because you can have very high quality JPEGs, or if you turn the quality down, you can have a very small uh, file size on your computer, of course, that will sacrifice quality. Another common image or still image format are PNG images, which are also compressed, but not so much. They preserve a lot of quality, but what you get with PNG images is you get uh, the ability to save transparency. That's what red, green, and blue, that's what this A, the alpha, is. It allows for an alpha channel, which means it can have transparency right in the image. In case you want to do some compositing later, you want to add a different background and later, you can do that because you can make part of the, or even the sky or part of the image, transparent. But of course, now things have changed in Blender 2.79. We don't have nearly as many movie formats, or at least that's what it seems like. But that's because of this new option called FFmpeg Video. If I select this, this is really a gateway to a whole host of different kinds of video formats that you can save to. FFmpeg is actually a different program. It's actually a free program that you can use on any kind of computer, a Windows computer, a Mac computer, or a Linux computer, but it's a separate program that you can use. And it's actually, get this, it's a command line program. means it doesn't actually have a friendly user interface with buttons. It's based in that old DOS or command prompt or terminal window. And so you have to actually type code to use it, but don't worry, in order to use it inside of Blender, you don't have to do any of that. It's very, very easy. Once you select FFmpeg video, you get a new section right below that output section called encoding. And it's in here that you can select a few different settings, including what's called the container of the video. Now the container of the video corresponds to the file extension of the video. You might know some like .mov, that's a QuickTime movie. MP4 is very common. WMV, that's a Windows-based file format. There's also .avi, which is a very common standard. And of course, there's FLA, which is flash video. And there's MKV, which is a very common one as well. Those are all containers that contain different video and possibly audio streams, but those are just the containers. What belongs inside those containers are three things, a video stream, an audio stream, and metadata. Now let's talk about video streams first, because video streams are 
expressed in their own way, as are audio streams. They both use what are called a codec in order to compress. A codec is really an algorithm that compresses frames of video or a stream of audio, so they don't take up nearly as much room on your computer, so you can easily upload them to the internet and stream them on streaming sites like YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and select the most common container. This is where you change it here, um, which is MPEG-4. It's a very, very common standard now, which will give my file a file extension of .mp4 at the end of the file name. I'm going to go ahead and select the video codec, the compression for the pictures, the video stream inside of this video container. We're going to select uh, H.264. Of course, you can see there's a whole list of them, including you can use a PNG codec, which is for video. It basically compresses every frame of your video uh, like it would a PNG image, but a sequence of them. You can also select things like Huff YUV. That's a very common uh, video codec or MPEG-2, which is the codec used on DVD movies. Of course, you might have heard of DivX, but the most common by far one these days is H.264. And below that, you can select your output quality. Now, there are some presets here, and you can choose whichever one you like, lowest quality, high quality, even lossless, if you don't mind a very big uh, file size. So I'm going to go ahead and select high quality. Next, I'm going to select an encoding speed, and this will affect the uh, speed, of course, it takes to output your video, and you might want to select a slower speed to get better quality and possibly a smaller file size for the quality that you get. So I'm going to choose, actually, let's say a medium speed, and we are pretty much good to export our video so long as we don't need sound. Now you might be wondering, and we'll talk about sound in just a moment, you might be wondering about all of these bit rate and rate and packet size and buffer settings uh, below our kind of preset settings that we just used up here. Well, you can access these if you want to actually specify your own, let's say, bit rate. Um, this is measured in kilobits per second, and so uh, high quality is 6,000 kilobits per second. If you want to access these, instead of selecting one of the presets in terms of quality, you can select none, use constant bitrate. And once I select that, these become accessible. And so I can turn my bitrate up higher, which you might want to do if you want something that's really good quality, if you're not just exporting something silly to something like YouTube or Facebook video. In this case, I'm going to type in 10,000 and that will get me a better quality video. But because I just selected high quality, it left all my other settings alone from that preset. Now, if you want audio, in your animation, of course, you have to add it. So if you want to have audio, what I would do is I would change my 3D viewport window uh, into what's called the video sequence editor window. Down here, I can click on this button and select video sequence editor. This is basically the timeline or tracks from a video editing program right inside of Blender. And so in this window on the header, I can select add and I can add a sound. So I can bring in a sound file from my computer and I can add it in here and I can put it, uh, it will look like a block, like a clip in a video editing program. And I can put it in here. And so if I have audio in my Blender file, I'm going to quickly switch back to my 3D view window because I'm not actually going to have audio. If I want audio and I have audio in this file, I can select now an audio codec. This is very similar to selecting a video codec, but of course audio is different. So it has different compression algorithms. The three most common audio codecs are MP3. You would have heard of that one. Also AAC and AC3. If you're wanting to use your video on a Dolby Digital Surround Sound system, you'll want to select AC3. Otherwise, I would recommend AAC. AAC is essentially the official MPEG-4 video compression format. It's basically the successor to MP3. It'll get you good quality. So if I select that, the only other thing I'll worry about is the bit rate. And that's the kilobits per second that the audio portion of your whole video file takes up. 192 is great. It's basically slightly compressed or quite compressed, but very good quality, uh, almost CD quality audio. So that's a good value. Another lower common standard is 128. Again, kilobits per second, but I'll leave it at 192. So at this point, all I have to worry about is outputting this file to my computer. So under the output section, I'm gonna click on the folder. I'm gonna save it to my uh, desktop. And I'm gonna call this file in the second bar, the top bar up here shows me where I'm saving on my computer. So I'm saving to my C drive, to my users folder, to my colon user folder, and to my desktop. I'm going to name this file and it will automatically add .mp4 to the end of this file because I selected uh, MPEG-4 as the container for my video. So I'm going to name this snowman slide in. 
and I'm not going to add manually.mpeg4 or .mp4. It'll add that for me uh, automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and click on accept. By the way, I forgot one thing. If you want to render out an animation, it's important to know a couple of things, and this is included in the metadata of your video file. That's the last thing that's in a video file. Remember, we have a container, and within that container, we have three things a video stream with its own video codec. In my case, we're using .h.264. We also have inside of our container an audio stream. In my case, I'm using the audio codec AAC. And lastly, we have metadata, which stores things like your frame rate and how many frames are in your video and how often there's a keyframe inside of your video depending on the video codec that you're using. We didn't talk about that, but many video codecs don't actually store every single frame of a video. They store every few or every several uh, keyframes or frames of your video, but then they'll store information about how that frame changed from one keyframe to the next. So they can only store uh, change information, so they don't actually have to store every single frame of your video. So that's exactly what this value here is under encoding keyframe interval. It'll store definitely at least every 18 frames. But the metadata primarily stores your frame rate, which is this value right here under dimensions. It also stores the resolution as well as the aspect ratio of every pixel. Pixels are not necessarily square. They could be stretched out to make a picture widescreen. Of course, you want to make sure that you have your start frame and an end frame value set correctly. These two values actually uh, line up with or are always synced with the start and end values on your timeline. So if I change start frame to 5 up here and press enter, it'll change it to 5 down here. But in my case, I'm going to render out frames 1 through 105. And let's go ahead and click on animation. All right, so it's finished rendering out the entire animation. I actually paused the video there so it wouldn't take up the several minutes that it took to render out all my frames, frame one to 105. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to speed up your render times significantly, I'll put a link on the screen right now to my tutorial in how to use a CPU and GPU with your video card uh, rendering inside of Blender to speed up your render times a whole lot. I actually use that. I paused the video and changed my render settings and so I could render this out in just a couple of minutes. But let's go ahead and check out my video file on my desktop. I can go ahead and click on my X to close my render window. I'll do a quick file save and I'll minimize uh, Blender. As you can see on my desktop, I have my video file. Blender has gone ahead and added the frames inside of the file name right before the file extension, which in my case is .mp4. So I have 0001 to 0105. Those are my frames. Let's go ahead and double click on the video. It should open up in your uh, default video player for your file extension on your computer and so we have our animation video and it's just going to loop on forever in this program but that'll be it for this video if you like this video or if you learned something go ahead and click on that like button below this video on youtube and if you want to see more videos like this one in planet and tech click on that subscribe button as well check out my facebook page at facebook.com slash born cg on that page i post updates and sneak peeks on what i'm working on next and of course that's where you can post any renders and share with me whatever you've made in blender but that'll be it for this one thanks for watching bye, -bye.